Hey everybody, you've heard me talk about it before. You heard me talk about it in a vlog. You even saw me unbox it. Today I'm going to be talking to you about my PBL Studio Easy Soft Boxes. Now this right here is the PBL Studio Soft Box. As you can see, it's a nice 24 inch by 24 inch soft box. You might not be able to tell it by the camera size, but whatever. Anyways, you can see that it's a decent soft box with some nice reflective material in there. And right here is a 5100 Kelvin 50 watt fluorescent lamp or compact fluorescent lamp or CFL. This actually gives off a decent amount of illumination and weren't there two in the kit? Yes, the other one is actually being used to illuminate this video right now. In any case, this one right here, I have the diffuser half on, half off so I could show you the bulb, but then when you put the diffuser all the way on, it looks a bit more like this. Sadly, I don't have another plug that I can plug this into to turn it on, but also that would just blow out the lens anyways. The big point about Easy Soft Boxes is that they have pre-positioned rods. Now there's a little circular bit back here that you can pull forward to collapse it down and push back when you want it to widen up. Then all you have to do is put the bulb right in there, put the diffusion on, and there you go, it's already set up. This is really good if you're running gunning, such as if you only have, say, a rental set for a very short period of time, or if you just need to move fast to be able to get all your shots in. One problem is that it's only 50 watts. And while 50 watts is decent, as it gives 150 watts of equivalent light when you're comparing it to a normal incandescent bulb, some basic problems can still seep in, in the basic idea that it's not extremely bright. Now I can shoot this just fine. It's not too underexposed, not too overexposed, nothing like that, but the basic idea is that you can end up shooting and getting a lot of grain and noise because you can't really put these things very far away before you start losing the light. You need to keep these things generally close and when shooting with a DSLR camera, people have always been recommending to me that you keep your aperture at f2.8 or wider, i.e. a lower number, which can seriously be a problem because most kit lenses actually don't go that wide, which can seriously be a downer for beginners because this means that you need to keep the lights ridiculously close. Even for this setup right here, I have the lights pretty dang close and the fact that the light is just outside the view of the camera. So here's the edge of the frame. There's the light. There. See? It's not very far away. I'm pretty dang close to it, see? So you can't really put them extremely far away or else you're just gonna lose the light and then you can't use it. As a note, I'll show this to you. These stands, you'll get them with most cheap fluorescent kits such as a cheap umbrella kit or even these soft boxes. And while they might look nice when you first get them, you probably will have to throw them out in like two, maybe three years if you treat them real nice. They're not great and they just barely give enough support and most of the time they're not extremely tall. Definitely I'd recommend trying to invest in some better quality stands real soon because seriously you're not going to want to be stuck there with a broken in half stand because it's not extremely well made and you're like well I have a shoot in an hour and now I'm at one stand short. So I definitely recommend either investing in more of these stands or trying to get some higher quality ones especially if they have like air or spring cushions that keep them from like pinching your fingers or dropping the lights. So yeah, you're not getting the highest quality stands when you buy this light kit. But I have four of these cheap stands and they've worked well enough for me. Two of them I've had since the unboxing video and two of them I've had since like 2010. People have always been recommending that I use these as fill lights to fill in the shadows, such as this light up here. See? it fills in the shadows. So people always say, get a nice strong light and then fill in the shadows with these because you can put them generally close. Or use them as a rim light or something or you know, put them to light up your hair and your shoulder. And while that's all well and good, I don't have the money for any brighter lights so the rim light or the fill light and everything would be the same power. So this is actually one of the brightest lights I own next to my halogen work lights which are really annoying. The bulbs always break because they're super sensitive and they get super hot. So that's why I've fallen in love with these lights so fast because all the problems with my halogen lights are gone. Although sadly I do lose a bit of the intensity and of course I can't use them as far away. But whatever, I usually shoot inside anyways so there's not a giant reason for me to put these extremely far away. I can definitely recommend these to people who need to run and gun. You know, you need to move fast, you need to set up your lights fast, and you need to get out. 
So that's definitely a plus for them there. But the second thing is for people who don't yet have the money or the need for these extremely expensive and gigantic lights. I've heard tons of people complain that these lights aren't bright enough for their purposes but that's not what they're built for. They're built for beginners. They're built for people who are using desk lamps and clamp lights, not people who already have a giant 700 watt HMI from Ari sitting over there in their corner. This is not built for that. It is built for people who are just beginning or for people who need to be able to quickly move their lights in and out. And while yes, professionals can need to move in some decently sized lights in and out of the studio really fast, still, you can always just upgrade the bulbs. While this might be 150 watts equivalent, 85 watt bulbs are closer to 250 watt equivalent, which is great. So while I am a little disappointed in the fact that they didn't come with say an 85 watt or 105 watt bulb, I'm definitely okay with using this. It's like a kit lens. Use it for the beginning and then when you outgrow it, replace it with something better. So why complain about not having a completely superb bulb to begin with? They're easily replaceable. They have an Edison screw right in the back. It's not like you need to buy this gigantically expensive thing. Now while 85 watt and 105 watt CFLs can be somewhat expensive, between 10 to $15 per bulb, which is expensive for normal bulbs. But the basic idea is that you need these things to be bright. You cannot say, oh my God, how dare they charge me for a heatless, extremely power saving bulb that gives off tons of light. So these definitely have their niche and their niche is beginners and run and gun shooters. That's it. That's pretty much all they're good for because if you're trying to use them for big shoots, you're gonna be pretty dang disappointed when these things don't put up enough light to fill in the shadows of your LOL 1K. So there you go. That's my review of the PBL Studio Easy Softbox. You get about 300 watts of light when using both of the lights at one time, and you can get pretty dang close with just one light when you upgrade the bulbs. So this is definitely a purchase that I recommend to beginners and running gun shooters, as I've said for the billionth time. I'm gonna leave before I keep rambling on and on and on and make a 16 minute video that could have been trimmed down to about eight minutes. I'm gonna go.